I, this is going to be a really simple session, is my hope. Um, in, in essence, the really, um, so I don't know, how, how many people are familiar with what happened with table features when um, OVS decided to expose table features to Open Daylight? Anybody know what? So, has anybody experienced this? Okay, so open so OBS in like 2.4, I think, added table features. They actually responded with, and they never did it in the past because they literally just said, "We have 256 tables. All the tables have all of the things. Why are you even asking me?" Um, and so they actually exposed it, and the result was that the Yang JSON rendering of all 256 tables with all possible options turned on was like four megabytes of JSON data per switch. Um, <laughs> Uh, all loaded into the inventory model in Open Daylight. So if you queried the inventory model, you could very easily end up querying like tens, tens of megabytes to hundreds of megabytes of data. Um, uh, so this is sort of not, th th that, that point problem has obvious solutions and we just turned it, turn, it'd be a bit of a knob where you can turn off table features being rendered in the JSON. It's kept internally as state and used for things, but it's not actually rendered in a way that you can get via RESTCOM. But like the general problem of like, we have a massive, massive data store that can store almost arbitrary quantities of information. And we have no clean way to ask for subsets of it except by subtree. <laughs> uh, so like you pass me a, sub a, a, a path and I will give you the entire subtree underneath that path. And that is not what most people, I mean, it, it's fine for common cases, it's not so great for the general case. And so um, I think we just really, like, like I, I, and I've heard this a lot, both internally at Brocade and from others, that like, you know, having some kind of querying or filtering support over RESTConf, since RESTConf is the API that most people end up using to program to open daylight, would be really, really, really nice. Um, and, and I don't really know, um, and, and, and I have some ideas about how you might go about implementing it and where you would put it and whether you, I mean, you could use XPath queries, you could use, you know, just simple, uh, you know, uh, regex queries. I don't really know over the path, but I, I'm sort of, I'm hoping, that I, I, so I have a problem statement. I don't really have a proposed solution. And I'm sort of curious, uh, uh, I have, and, you know, do you, you, you could even do the, do you do the querying at the rest comp level, do you do it at the DOM data store level? Um, I don't know, and so are there are people, and I think there are mics somewhere, there. I think there are two mics on that table. Um, in the back if people want to talk since it's being recorded and if you're mic'd up it'll help. But I'll just open that up. That's sort of the problem statement, some general idea of what we'd like to do. And I don't know if people have comments, questions, or ideas in order to sort of help push that. And I can grab mics from over there on that table if people want them. Nothing? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, well, so I mean, like, so, um, um, so I mean, so the question would be, you know, like, so basically, um, you know, there's a query filter language question. So, like, what query filter language would you like to use? Um, and and I don't know. I mean, there's XPath, which I guess is, and I don't even know if it's capitalized correctly. Given that we have basically a DOM data tree, it seems like XPath is an obvious choice. I don't know how much people like or dislike XPath. Um, so what I was trying to say was uh, you can probably make a query down to a deeper level in the containers, but then another part maybe, are you interested in two separate parts of the tree, like something in one container and something else in a completely different container? Well, as, uh, and so neither one of, so, so neither, so yes is the answer, possibly. I think in the short version, it's just a matter of how do you suppress data you don't want to see. And querying down to a deeper level in the tree doesn't actually help you in the sense that like if I need to get a leaf that's at the same level as, as, as the feature, features table list was, I can't get that leaf without also pulling all the table features and information through with me. So there are instances where I literally am incapable. There is no query to RESTConf that will give me the data that I want and exclude the data that I don't want. 
um, it is impossible to do but in sort of the construction of RESTConf, um, which is not, not, it's not to say that RESTConf is wrong, it's just to say like, if you don't want to download 10 megabytes of data, <laughs> No, and you want to get that leaf, you, you get to pick one. And you could be like asking for that same leaf across like 100 different nodes. Yeah, in which case you would then have to get, you know. 100 different queries. 100 different queries, each of which, you know, and each of which is going to return you megabytes of data. Is that right? So I mean, so, so yeah, and, and I'm not, I, I don't really, so, 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 and I don't really have, I actually, I, this is not my area of expertise. I know that we have a problem <laughs> and, and, and that sort of we, we really need to get through it. Um, so uh, XPath is what I know. I don't know what other query languages are worth looking at. Okay, and then. Um, um, and so there's also yes. Yeah, so, so there's um, there's uh, the query filter language. The other one is like you know where to do the querying and filtering. Um, um, and so like, and I'll just as a as a, and, and if there are other things, people should speak up. Like. I, so the immediate question is. Um, do we need queries that select the data across trees, or is cutting down the depth of a, of a query sufficient? Um, because RESTConf already has um, a built-in parameter to essentially query a subtree and only return uh, a certain depth. So that would be an OOP for on, on our side. The, the, well, so the depth parameter isn't implemented in our RESTConf. Um, Are you sure? Yes. Um, in, in, in the dash in 15 the, thing? In the I don't know in the draft 15. In the draft 2 implementation, I am 100% certain because I remember the person who, I remember when somebody commented out both the code that implemented it and, and the test that ensured that it stayed there. <laughs> um, right, because, uh, so, so, so the reason I'm asking is that um, if we, so, so first of all, this is RESTCOM, so if, if we are missing something that is in the spec and we don't implement it, so that would be the first thing to address. Um, and then adding, a, 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 it really boils down to how do you push that query using RESTCOM, and that sounds like an extension to the specification to me, um, which is something that we probably um, can prototype, but we'll need to upstream it to IETF to really make it a standardized interface. And so I'm trying to remember, and is Evan here? Do you, and so maybe you guys can tell me, I remember I asked about depth, and is depth just not, does depth, I, I remember, remember depth not helping, the depth parameter not helping when you were trying to get like the topology in particular, because like you couldn't get, um, so, so can we get an example of what we are trying to get out of which model, so so that we can kind of throw some darts on it? I mean, uh, yeah, sure. Uh, selecting all the features for all the switches should be possible. Um, do we are are we searching for say all all switches which have a particular flow installed? Or what are what, what is what 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 is it exactly that we are querying for? Um, and so I, I think the answer the answer is both. The answer is like you know lot people found lots of value in the XSQL project, uh, you know which you know right which is now I mean like no I'm not kidding I mean like uh, it, it's now defunct, um, but but you know adding that sort of as a fundamental like you know part of uh, making it exposed via REST, which is where everybody else uses it, seems like it'd be useful. But I think the more critical short-term problem is how is it that I can get um, 
uh, um, consistently get reasonably sized responses to my queries so that way I don't accidentally suck in a million entries of, of, uh, of things. And I think the answer is you, it, it's technically possible um, if you do, um, if you do, you're willing to do lots of queries and you limit the depth parameter, right? I mean, like, um, uh, right. But my my point is that there are different surfaces that we need to cross when when implementing this, right? So, um, understanding it of wh what is it that we want to achieve and not boil the ocean is very important to, in order to have something that we can uh, deliver in a reasonable time frame. Yeah, and so um, I'm trying to think. So, so does um, and so I'm going to look at this table because these people are part. Of some I think people have had some of the issue. Do we know if it would be sufficient to have just the depth parameter and query deeper? I th I, I seem to remember asking that question and then having somebody tell me I was wrong and being convinced that I was wrong afterwards. Like, but does the question make sense? Yeah, start with something simple because the the other one where you actually want to maybe query across multiple subtrees and doing that kind of thing. You have to have a piece of code in there that understands the models, can translate the query into actually multiple requests in multiple subtrees, which are all model driven. And if you don't want to hardwire the code, you, you, you need something that basically sucks in the schemas and kind of can work with the schemas and work with the schemas. Um, yeah, so, so e effectively, yes, we do want to have a query uh, language um, in in RESTConf, sure, but the thing is, um, if if the each we are trying to scratch is the size of the document which is returned, um, uh, we can certainly implement it inside RESTConf. Now, if that means uh, pulling in all the data from all the shards um, towards a particular node, um, that's gonna push the project uh, the the problem down one layer. And, and then the question becomes, well, what do we do next? So, so clearly scoping, what, what is it that we really, really need? And uh, mapping out what do we want to do and in, in what time frames um, is, is critical, right? Because essentially the, the enhancement bug for having XPath slash X query for, for listeners has been there for two years. Trouble is implementing it efficiently, right? Um, and uh, crossing shards and, and similar may, may be a challenge, which is uh, difficult if if we don't want to implement our own X query or X path engine. Um, so, so I'm trying. So, so if the an if the answer is um, so the answer is I think we have two different things we want to do. I'm trying to remember. I'm trying to walk through the example, um, and I think it was around querying the nodes and links in the topology where it was exceedingly inefficient to be able to iteratively explore the tree um, at, with it. Like so, essentially, you had to like you essentially had to set the depth parameter to. The, pro the problem is like when do you set the depth parameter and how far down do you set it to avoid getting it? And the other thing is you run into augmentations which tend to kill you. Um, so you, you have to basically set the depth parameter to like n minus one, figure out what's there. Then you're, you're essentially implementing a breadth first search over rest to be able to get sane query sizes, which is really ugly um, uh, and slow uh, depending on how you get it implemented, right? Um, uh, does that make sense, right? Because you can't, Yes, it does, but the, the thing is, the, the, the key point is boiling the ocean, right? I, I, I understand the, 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 um, um, uh, the, the Eden solution, right? <laughs> but, but getting there um, is not going to be a two, two week solution and preferably we want to have a quick win to, do have, uh, to have something and um, a, a, a path and a set of requirements that Okay, kind of need to to be explored by by the projects involved because it's not just one project. One thing I like to point out is in kind of quote unquote regular rest, uh, you would be able to tailor these um, rest calls to do exactly what you what you like to want with you know the, yeah. the granularity, but you would have to write code for each single one of them, right? So now. Um, 
if we were to do this uh, query engine, would you actually just basically implement these queries as uh, you know code that you plug in? Um, no, no, absolutely. I mean, that's not not the ideal way. You want to do it in a generic way, and if you want to do it in a generic way, then you have to. You know, there's a complexity of yet another MD sal order of magnitude where basically you know you've got to be model driven and you've got to be able well, to I mean, but, but work have, with the schemas. There right? are there are really good um, you know DOM oriented querying languages and query engines which we implement which are not schema aware, but you know and so but you know this, this you could but that sort of doesn't you if you want to do the simplest thing first I mean you could literally for example. I mean, uh, just, uh, to be a really simple don't boil the ocean thing, do a REST conf query, get the XML, <laughs> then, you know, uh, from the controller, if you're trying to protect the client from getting tons of data, you're not necessarily trying to protect the controller, then you could run XPath, an XPath query over it, or an X query, you know, an X query over it, and return that, that subset of the results back. And so literally make it as a layer, like a, a separate service outside the controller. That would be something you could do. And it would be easy, and it would be like essentially a trivial compilation of a couple of different tools. Um, it doesn't solve the load on the server problem. Um, um, and that's sort of what I was trying to get at um, here. Um, um, so basically, um, you know, outside the controller. Uh, um, so basically, this is like, you know, you could, you know, basically get the XML, you know, run query, you know, return result. And basically, then you have like client is protected from, you know, gobs and gobs of data. Uh, um, only has to pass over localhost. You know, um, so like that sort of you know right like that would be something that would be really really simple. It would solve some of the objective. Clearly, that doesn't you know it doesn't you know protect you know resource consumption of the controller. Um, and you could generalize this, and actually there was a proof of concept that we did where basically we wrapped all of the MDSAL DOM things in. In, in documents, right, in XML documents, and then basically literally just ran Java X grade over it. How well did it perform? <laughs> um, uh, uh, we didn't test it very well for that, for that one of you. Um, just a data point, the depth parameter is implemented in Draft 15. Okay. And um, unlike the spec, it actually allows for um, depth more than 64K. The specs is only 64K. <laughs> we actually implement any integer. <laughs> um, I, I, if the need is there. <laughs> I don't, I think we have bigger problems if we need a 60, 65K depth parameter in order to go further down into the tree. That's, uh, uh, I, I like to make fun of Windows for having too, too, sh too short a file, uh, a file name or for, you know, path name property, but I think 64K in terms of number of levels of hierarchy is probably reasonable. Um, so like, so you do this at the retcon for the thing outside the controller, um, I, you know, you could, um, you, uh, you could do it on the DOM inside. Um, uh, but I, I think, um, and the question is how does this perform? Uh, and is the depth parameter performant in, in I mean, because I think the depth parameter as it was implemented in draft 02, and I think it was the reason it was removed, because it literally did the whole query and then pruned it. <laughs> um, yeah, and that, that goes to my point that um, RESTConf is ju just an access application, so there is not much it can do unless we, we push this down, further down the stack. And eventually, well, so, so I'm, not, it, I'm not necessarily saying this needs to be extension to RESTConf. I'm just saying we need a way to get the effect of having a query over the results that would have returned by RESTConf. Right. right. So, so RESTConf currently, what it does, it's gonna read all the data, obviously, and then um, as it as it is writing it out to either XML or in JSON, it simply skips traversing um, deeper than the specified level. Now, if we want to address um, uh, the, the 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 read part of it, obviously, then the um, DOM read transaction read uh, obviously needs to grow a parameter, um, which yeah. I'm not sure how, how useful it, it it's going to be. But 
since since based on sharding layout, you kind of need to push it down. And then if if we choose to implement some sort of query query filter language, then um, actually not going through reads, but uh, turning that into um, a listener property is much better approach. And you would do a one-off uh, listener registration, wait, wait for the data store engine to calculate the result of that query, uh, get a notification, kill the listener, and return the data. Um, and that th there is an uh, uh, enhancement bug for that. Why would that be a better solution than than having? Uh, than because it's more generalized, and you can actually use it to to watch live data, not not just one of reads. So and and we do do have the need. So so um, essentially, what what we so so this this is a a push based model of processing, right? So if you do a data to change listener, you get notification about the data, the data moves towards you. Now, um, obviously, you can use that to implement any query language we, y y you want to, and currently we write hard code to do that. Now, if we say, say that, okay, um, instead of taking a Yang instance identifier as the root of, of the listener, we specify an XPath query and expect the result of that XPath query to be delivered to, to the listener and also the listener to be triggered whenever the result of that XPath query changes as, as the effect of some tra uh, transaction yeah. committing on the data store, that obviously is going to have much higher value to all our applications. Yeah, I mean, yes. But, and, and, because and that's essentially what you want to do with RESTConf. Yes. I mean, I mean, internally, applications also want to do it. It's just the penalty of not doing it in, in internally is lower than the penalty of not doing it to Um If you dis disregard the amount of code you have to write. Fair enough. Um, cool. So are there any last, I mean, so I think we're sort of at time. And um, I, and it sounds like the answer, I mean, the, a the actions are basically, you know, one, um, see how far we can get. Um, with just you know depth equals um, limitation, uh, you know limits, um, and uh, then two is um, you know discussions of you know the simplest useful um, way to uh, uh, to get so some real querying, and I, and I think that that's you know. I think they'll be really useful. Yeah, um, I'll just note that uh, draft 16 actually specifies uh, XPath 1.0 as a possible query language. So I think we should, should if we're implementing something, we should implement that. No, I, w I would tend to agree. <laughs> Anything else? OK. I'm going to send out a lot of these notes um, later on. I think I, in the Colin wrote up lots of things and thus ends up running lots of sessions. I think the next thing, actually, no, Ryan, you, you also get to help run the next one, right? Um, are you sure? I don't want to. Uh, RISCOM draft 16? <laughs> no? We're not going to replace it? All right, so um, I. Uh, I might ask Robert to get on stage. So I think the next thing that we're gonna—I I want to talk about was um, um, essentially uh, uh, how, 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 how we're gonna do about the migration to RESTConf draft 16, which presumably will be RESTConf RFC. Although I don't know, Jan, can you? Do, do you do we know when the RFC version of RESTConf is likely to happen? Do we have any ideas? Yeah, it's going through the process. The um, area director review wasn't really thrilling, and it was something like an eight-page eight document. And um, version 15 and 16 are, in fact, incompatible. So uh, hopefully that will happen after the next RETF, which is, I think, in oct October or November somewhere. So probably this year or early next year. Um, but I wouldn't hold my breath knowing IETF. Do we want to go to 16 at all? Um, yeah, so so are we on, on that topic now? Um, no, I'm going to go get coffee, and I'm actually going to take the time to go downstairs. So I'll probably be back in five minutes if that's, because I think we start in two minutes here. But I, I need coffee. So yep. let's, let, this will be the topic next, and let's let people.
Sure. But yeah, I mean, I think that, that, that I mean, these are the, the interesting questions are, does it make, when does it make sense to move? What does it make sense to move to? Should we hold off until it's standardized? Um, so that kind of thing. Well, yeah. Okay. yeah, let's follow up after coffee, right? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> So what I was trying to say was uh, you can probably make a query down to a deeper level in the containers. But then another part maybe, are you interested in two separate parts of the tree, like something in one container and something else in a completely different container? Well, as, uh, and so neither one of, so, so neither, so yes is the answer, possibly. I think in the short version, it's just a matter of how do you suppress data you don't want to see. And querying down to a deeper level in the tree doesn't actually help you in the sense that like if I need to get a leaf that's at the same level as, as, as the feature, features table list was, I can't get that leaf without, I, this is going to be a really simple session is my hope. Um, in, in essence, the really, um, so I don't know, how, how many people are familiar what happened with table features when um, Ovius decided to expose table features to open daylight? Anybody know what, so does anybody experience this? Okay, so open, so OBS in like 2.4, I think, added table features. They actually responded with, and they never did it in the past because they literally just said, we have 256 tables, all the tables have all of the things, why are you even asking me? Um, and so they actually exposed it, and the result was that the Yang JSON rendering of all 256 tables with all possible options turned on was like four megabytes of JSON data per switch. Um, <laughs> Uh, all loaded into the inventory model in open daylight. So if you query the inventory model, you could very easily end up querying like tens, tens of megabytes to hundreds of megabytes of data. Um, uh, so this is sort of not, th th that, that point problem has obvious solutions and we just turned it, turn, it'd be a bit of a knob where you can turn off table features being rendered in the JSON. It's kept internally as state and used for things, but it's not actually rendered in a way that you can get via REST comp. But like the general problem of like, we have a massive, massive data store that can store almost arbitrary quantities of information. And we have no clean way to ask for subsets of it except by subtree. <laughs> uh, so like you pass me a, sub a, a, a path and I will give you the entire subtree underneath that path. And that is not what most people, I mean, it, it's fine for common cases, it's not so great for the general case. And so um, I think we just really, like, like I, I, and I've heard this a lot, both internally at Brocade and from others, that like, you know, having some kind of querying or filtering support over RESTConf, since RESTConf is the API that most people end up using to program to open daylight, would be really, really, really nice. Um, and, and I don't really know, um, and, and, and I have some ideas about how you might go about implementing it, where you would put it, and whether you, I mean, you could use XPath queries, you could use, you know, just simple, uh, you know, uh, regex queries. I don't really know over the path, but I, I'm sort of, I'm hoping, that I, I, so I have a problem statement, I don't really have a proposed solution. And I'm sort of curious, uh, uh, I have, and, you know, do you, you, you could even do the, do you do the querying at the REST comp level, do you do it at the DOM data store level? Um, I don't know, and so are there people, and I think there are mics somewhere, there. I think there are two mics on that table. Um, in the back if people want to talk since it's being recorded and if you're mic'd up it'll help. But I'll just open that up. That's sort of the problem statement, some general idea of what we'd like to do. And I don't know if people have comments, questions, or ideas in order to sort of help push that. And I can grab mics from over there on the table if people want them. Nothing? Yes. <laughs> um, uh, well, so, I mean, like, so, um, um, so, I mean, so the question would be, you know, like, so basically, um, you know, there's a query filter language question. So, like, what query filter language would you like to use? Um, and, and I don't know. I mean, there's XPath, which I guess is, and I don't even know if it's capitalized correctly. Given that we have basically a DOM data tree, it seems like XPath is an obvious choice. I don't know how much people like or dislike XPath. Um, 